uh, he, he would probably put down the phone and, and, and dial again thinking he had the wrong number. Um, these very simple forms of ritual, which we don't normally even think of them as ritual, but they are ritual because they are, they are forms of behavior that are established by, by convention, by, by, by social tradition. These, these very basic rituals um, make life so much easier that it would be very difficult to, to, to get along without, without some form of ritual. Now, regarding the, the, the second part of the question, did the Buddha himself practice any rituals? Um, as far as we know, he did. Not, 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 um, uh, I don't think that we have any, any evidence that the Buddha um, sat down and performed elaborate uh, 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 rituals but he certainly did observe certain forms and certain conventions um, when he went for alms he always took his bowl in one hand and uh, took his upper robe in the other hand this was uh, a, a, an observance a practice that he seems to have uh, done without fail it was a it was a, a, a way of going for alms, a, a, a practice, a, an established form of behavior. Um, when, when the Buddha would, would uh, sit down, he would, uh, his upper robe would be folded in four quarters, would be folded in, in uh, four times. This he seems to have done without fail. He would sit on his upper robe folded in four quarters. It, it, it never says uh, in the texts, in the descriptions of the of the Buddha in his daily activities, it never says that the Buddha simply sat down. You know, he always had his upper robe folded in four quarters, and then he sat on it. Um, similarly, when the, when the Buddha lay down, he always lay down on his right side with his head resting on his hand and one foot resting on the other. He, he never just flop down on his left side, you know. So it seems that there was a very careful attention to, to the forms of behavior, which I think we, realistically, we can only call them ritual acts. The, 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 the behavior of the Buddha uh, in his daily life was very carefully, uh, it conformed very carefully to established forms and forms that that I think we can call ritual forms so in in that sense I think yes I think the Buddha did he also uh, for example did um, uh, uh, encourage the, um, the, the, the 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 basic rituals of, of refuge taking and of um, of, um, of uh, ordination so those are rituals with uh, in which the Buddha did uh, uh, did, did instruct and did um, uh, sanction the practice of those rituals, the rituals of refuge and the rituals of ordination, uh, the ritual of, of recitation of the uh, of the monastic rules of the Patimokkha. That was also sanctioned by the Buddha. So yes, the the basic uh, a number of basic rituals were taught and practiced by the Buddha, I think, is the answer to, the, to that question. Uh, afternoon, sir. Yes. Um, just want to ask something about uh, Feng Shui, this part of this world. Uh, to what, how do we practitioners have, should have a correct view of, you know, or view geomancy or Feng Shui in this area? Is it, is it a correct view or, or is it, or how should we approach this, you know? This time, yes. Well, um, I think, um, like most um, uh, worldly sciences, and I think, I think I can, I think I can characterize feng shui as, as a worldly, as a worldly science, um, in the sense that it it does not have to do with liberation. Um, like worldly sciences, we can um, 
we can observe it, we can utilize it in conjunction with our, with our Buddhist teaching, with our Buddhist practice, the essential uh, element in being a Buddhist and 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 a Bu